you say that they spoke Hebrew, I will understand. Yeah. But if you say that they spoke Greek, that's totally nonsense. Uh, you see here. No, look. L it, listen, it, it, let, let yeah. me just finish my yeah. point. Yeah. The Roman Empire, they spoke Latin, ancient Latin or that yeah, Latin. Yeah, they did. Yeah? yeah? So the communication, the Aramaic was a language in that area. We still, they still that somebody call it churches in the Middle East, yeah. they call the Aramaic, they have the Syrianic church, they, they, they speak this old, or similar to the old Aramaic language. They have kind of similar to Syrianic. Aramaic is similar. Similar, but it's, it's extracted so from there. But, but that, that's not my point. My point is, it was something that was, it was a communication there. If, he say, if you say to me that they spoke Hebrew, and it is written in Hebrew, no problem. I will say, okay, that's fine. But to use an ancient language, which is not used of that time, people that didn't use it, and yet you make it the word of God, the most holy scripture in a Christian world, and it has to be written in a language which wasn't spoken by Jesus, spoken by his disciples, spoken by those ones who are around him from the, children, from the house of Israel, and you expect the house of Israel to follow him. You see my point? I see your point, but uh, I, 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 I can make a point here as well. If they spoke in Aramaic or they spoke in Latin, that means those countries were might be conquered by the Roman, whereby you can see like in Africa, my country where yeah, I come yeah. from, yeah. is colonized by the British. By the British, yeah. So they introduced English, English yes. as the main connection language yeah. to even different tribes. That's fine. But now, if at all uh, the, uh, the Jews were speaking, or the Israelites, they were not the Jews at that time, they were speaking in Aramaic, that means that language would be still here up to now. But you see, the language is not there anymore. But the Hebrew language is still existing up to now. That is, that is not my point, John. Yeah. I know. My point I'm is, to make a point. my point is, yeah. I, I said, if it should be in Hebrew, then the first text must be written in Hebrew, like the Old Testament, which is they found some manuscript written in Hebrew in the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah but the New Testament, yeah. it must be written in Hebrew in order for us to go along with the language of Jesus. That is what it is. I said. I will understand if they wrote it in Aramaic because it was a common language there. I said I will understand it. But it is kind of an impossible to say, okay, Jesus spoke in Hebrew. He communicated to the house of Israel in Hebrew. He talked to them, for example, in Hebrew. Maybe I will understand this, no problem. But when you say to me that this communication and all of these things written in Greek, where this, where this nonsense came from? Well, uh, as I told you today, because the Bible or the Word of God is a universal... Universal, a, they can use Latin. Universal. Latin Roman the Empire was Latin. why possibly is written in Hebrew and also in No, Greek. it wasn't written in Hebrew. No, no, the, the first Bible manuscript was written, written in Hebrew and Greek. No, oh, let, let's, let's, I'm, I'm, let's, I'm, clarify. I'm, let's clarify, let's clarify, let's clarify. Old I'm, Testament, I'm, old, I'm, the Bible is the New Testament, the Old Testament. Yeah. D don't confuse the Old Testament with the I'm New Testament. Confusing. I'm talking about the New Testament, when I, mean, when I mean the word of Jesus, yeah. I'm talking about the New Testament. The New Testament, the first manuscript is written in Greek. It's not in Hebrew, simple as that. The Old Testament is not written in Greek. Yes, it's written the in Hebrew. The Old Testament in Hebrew. written in Hebrew. Good, yeah. Because uh, Moses, yes. one of the prophets, he spoke I Hebrew. Said, he wrote spoke Hebrew. five books in the Old Testament. And that <coughs> is all written in Hebrew. Yeah, I, I understand and it that. Is the Torah. The New Testament that yeah. is written in Hebrew and Greek. No, the New Testament is not written in Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew because no. the people that wrote that, like for instance, John. Yeah. Like Peter and Paul, John, what language did they write? Hebrew. Fair, Greek. That's my point. It is not written in Hebrew. You see the point is. It is written listen, in, listen. It is written in either, Hebrew. Either John, or Greek. John. Either you don't know. I do. Okay. Or you are misunderstood okay. it. No. Oh, I'm saying to yeah. you, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I'm saying to you, the earliest manuscript, yeah. which they said, yeah. 
hundred and something yes. patches, patches yes. of the New Testament, patches. Yes. Yeah? yeah, hundred and something after Jesus. Yeah. The earliest one, yeah. written in Greek. You understand? Mm -hmm. There is no Hebrew there. So the point is what I'm making here. Yeah. If if we accept, and I don't accept that John met Jesus because we don't know who is John. Some people they say he's John, John the disciple, etc. And even uh, there is a big debate between Christian scholars that who is about the character of John. Who is John? Did he meet Jesus? Is he there? Was he a, a person that is known? And not just that. When you see, when you see in your Bible here, when you see, they will say this gospel is according to John. Yeah. Me and you understand English, yeah? Of course. We so when I say is according to John, does yeah. that make John wrote it or someone wrote it? Uh, you know, you have to know the way by which those manuscripts are written. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Uh, the reason why they said it's according to John because he was one of the people that wrote those under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit of God is involved, there is no limitation. But where human intervention is involved, there's always limitation. Yeah. And that is why you have to understand, my dear friend, uh, the Bible is God's word, is under God's inspiration. Whether it be written in Hebrew or in Greek. That's why, that's Arabic, why we have... The, I'm on brother. Yeah. I'm on brother. Wait, wait. Whether it be written in a different language is still the word of God. It doesn't make any difference. I'm not really bothered whether it's written in Greek or in Hebrew or in Aramaic or in Arabic. It doesn't matter. So long as it's a concrete word of God, which can lead people into righteousness, okay. that is a good that's thing. Why, that's why we have different four Gospels. Yes, we got four <laughs> Gospels. You see here. We got four jo Gospels. John, yes. John, yeah. you see the understanding I said, if, if we know if the word of God is the truth, yes. and we know the word of God, God will protect it and preserve it in Absolutely. order for the people to know it. Absolutely. And then, and I said to you earlier, if there is a contradiction, if I find a, sim a single example that contradicts this, it will be not truth anymore. It will if, be false. Okay. A single okay. counter example. Okay. You understand this concept? I do understand. Yeah. So if I have a yeah. single counter example to confirm that this this book which you use it as the New Testament, yeah. if I have a single counter example, that yeah. means not the word of God. One single okay. is the four gospels. Okay. The four gospels. Okay. Are they similar hundred okay. percent? Okay. If there be a contradiction in any of the manuscript, that means there was a mistake in publication. <laughs> that and is my even point. Even that can good. happen in the Quran and in oh, the Okay, book. okay, okay. One second. All right. So we That's can't good. dispute that. So, okay. So you accept there could be a mistake in the in the writing. In the publication. In publication. But no problem. God's word has All got right. no mistake. Yes, that's good. That's good. Man, yes. That's my point. All right. They have mistake. Good, good, good. Let's, I will use your argument. Not my argument. I will use what you said, not me. You said, just a minute ago, you said as follow. You said, those people who wrote the Gospels, they wrote the Gospels under the inspiration of God. Yes. Correct? Yeah. So if they wrote it under the inspiration of God, mm -hmm. can they still make mistakes while writing in, as, under the inspiration? They can make mistakes. So they can, for with the, the inspiration reason, of God. For the reason, is God involved in the writing of those manuscripts? Where God is involved, there's no mistake. No, there is. Uh, that's like, why. Like for instance, if you write something now, today, it might be in Arabic or English or any language, you write it down and you uh, revise it and you found that it's the right thing that you've written. Yeah, but that's not the word of God. When you send it somewhere in Africa and they tell them to write, they'll write a different thing. It's not going to be the same. By the way, what, by the way, what's your original language, your country? Ah, uh, we speak Swahili. Swahili. You, yeah. We're from Kenya. I'm born in Kenya. Ah, I see, Kenya. I love people from Kenya, by the way. I have many friends from there. I'm Kenya, but my mom is from the other country, Uganda. Uganda. So yeah, you, so you speak Swahili, the same I thing. Speak Swahili. Yeah. So you see here, John, again, going back to the concept that we have agreed, if there is a single counter example that contradicts the fact that this is this book it 
it has mistakes, that means it's not the word of God. That's what we have agreed. Now, the, the problem is, you said these things can happen, those are human mistakes. Even under the inspiration of God, still mistakes can happen. John, are you convincing okay, yourself yeah, yeah, or you are convincing okay, who hang on, about this? Hang on, hang on, hang on. You see, God can speak a word today to you, you know? And let me say you have many generations that come in and go out and all so forth. Do you think those generations are going to keep that very word yes. that God has spoken to you? Yes. And okay. it happened. So and how? What is the evidence that you have kept that word of God? Those are the things that can betray any one okay. of us. The Quran. The Quran is, but you don't keep it fully, do you? No, we keep it fully. Do you keep it fully? Fully. So you are. We have. We okay. have now. We have now. Okay. Let me. I will give you the information. We have now currently, while I'm talking to you, yeah. over than 15 million people on Earth, yeah. including your country. People from your, from Kenya, yeah. from yeah. Tanzania, yeah. from Uganda, yeah. Muslims, all around the world, yeah. Somalia, India, yeah. all around the world, Turkey, you name it, Jordan, you name it. Yeah. 15 million people on earth, yeah. children as young as six and seven years old. Yeah. They memorize the whole Quran from cover to cover. Yeah. As it is, majority of them, they are non-Arab origins yes. and they, they speak the Quran fluently and you could see if I could show you hundreds of video, yeah. videos yeah. in Africa and your country from your from the same country that you came from yeah. who memorized the Quran all of it but does Word. that guarantee the eternity yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. I will tell you how you're, yes. you're not telling the I will truth. tell you no I'm you're, telling the truth you're John, not John, the John, truth. John John you're John 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 I told, now here, I said to you how the Qur'an is preserved. Now going back in the history, do you know how we memorize the Qur'an? Do you know how? I don't know how you Let memorize. Let me tell you. I don't know I, how you I will, edu I will okay, tell you. you tell I will me. tell you. Yeah. I will tell you. By the way, and again, and that's something for all our brothers and sisters who are watching us now. That, that one of the things that I love in this park, that I found some good people like him. And he is someone who's honest man, and he came with respect and with ha have a, a nice discussion, and that's what we want. We want you to have this discussion. We're not we're like that guy. Unlike, unlike, unlike the others, we don't, we don't need to attack, we're not here, we are here just only to find, we are researchers, we want you to find the truth. And now I will tell you how the Quran is being preserved and being memorized. I learn from my, my teacher, from my sheikh, word by word. To the extent, I will give you one single example now. If I recited the Quran with one single vowel, vowel, can you imagine? And instead of ah, I recite e or u, oh, someone will jump here and say, no, it's like this. Yeah? Someone will say to me, for example, if I say, for example, Allah says in the Quran, li'ilaf li Quraysh. If I say li'ilaf Quraysh, you will find many people will say, no, it's li'ilaf Quraysh. You will find many people will say this to me. Why? Because this is how the Quran is preserved. So I will memorize from my teacher. My teacher will do the same thing from his teacher. And his teacher will go do the same thing from that. And after I finish the Quran, he will give me a certificate. It's called Isnad, it's called Sanat. Meaning he, my teacher, will sign that he approved me that as someone who memorized the Quran, and he will give me the chain of narrators, all of them traced back, each single individual, who is he? Where is he from? What did he do? And what's, what's his position? All the way down to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this, not just only me, for every single person that have memorized the Quran on earth. That's how it is. So, the mistake is zero in this. Perfect, perfect. But the only problem with that, when you're doing like memorizing the Quran continuously, and yet, you don't have the spirit of a sovereign Lord, that thing is null and void. Because why we are able to do God's work is by His Spirit living in us. And that makes us, uh, of course, followers of God. Imagine like my brother here, he's been discussing things, I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation. And I'm he's telling the about. Uh, and I hope you, you enjoy the hot chocolate as well. You, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and I, you, the way you recite, the Quran, that might also encourage me how to recite the Bible, you know. In which language? So, 
I can recite it in a language that I understand because God is not limited to only one language. You know that different. You see? You know God, that different. You see, because God is supernatural, it's not only limited to Arabic or English or Hebrews or whatever. John. Because, hang on my yeah. brother, everyone speaks different languages. Then how can I understand God better? I can be a Muslim and I learn Arabic. But in my mother tongue, I can really understand things properly. Okay. So God is universal, and God allows everybody to understand his word <coughs> the way he wants them to understand. Okay. So if you're limited to one language, my brother, then that's going to be a problem. What about people in the jungle, in the uh, Ituri forest in Congo, the pygmies? Yes. They don't understand nothing. How are you going to present uh, what you believe in a language that they understand. Okay. Go ahead, brother. All right. Now here, you and me, we know if you want to translate a joke, a joke from a language to a language, it will lose its it's a human, you know, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's meaning. It's it's not going to be funny anymore. And you know this. If you translate even a joke, let alone the word of God. So when you translate the word of God from a language to another language, it will lose its substance. One second, I'm, okay, I, I, okay. Uh, yeah. But what we say to the people, when we educate the people, when they know the, learn the Quran, along with it, we teach them the meaning of it. So that's why I say this to the people who cannot speak Arabic. In your country, children as young as six and seven, who memorize the whole Quran from Kenya and Tanzania, from this area, who memorize the whole Quran. And yet, when they will say, can you explain to me this word and this word, we will tell you. Why? Because they as well, along with memorization, along with it, will have the understanding of it. Yeah? That's something which is, that's how the Quran it is. So because the, the, the question you said, is there any book can be preserved for all this? Year? I told you, yes. And that's, I, I, I gave you the proof. But going back, if we wanted to implement this to the Bible, firstly, we don't know who are those ones who wrote the Gospels. We don't know them. Firstly, as persons, we know in the habit of the children of Israel, they will name that person along with his father, along with his grandfather, along with his tribe, sometimes. That's the, that's the way when they say he is son of such. For example, when they, when they put the Jesus, his, his, his title, he said Joseph, and then they will give, even they will, put, uh, that they will, uh, they will attach him to, jo to Joseph the carpenter all the way back. The, the point is, you will find even the, the name of Jesus there, the full name there. You'll find the name of the other, the other people is mentioned. But when it comes to someone who is John, we don't know. There is, there, so that's why there is ambiguity about the John. There is ambiguity about Luke. Uh, ambiguity who, in terms of persons. That's one thing. If we add on top of this, that in the beginning of each gospel, they will say this book is according to. Meaning the one who is writing, he will say claims that it is according to, for example, your name is John, and I will write something. I will say what you said now, yeah, what you, the whole statement that you said to me now, I will summarize it in two, in two lines. I will say, and this word according to John, he said such a, maybe you didn't say fully, you said part of it. You said, maybe I will add, I will deduct. I'm ambiguous, no one knows what I'm saying, so that's the people who wrote from John, or the people who wrote from Luke, those are ambiguous people. That's why they use the term, this book is according to. That's what it means in English. It shows not this book is from John, it's according to John. According to what John thinks is the word of God. So that's why we have different four Gospels. They have difference. There are differences between them. Significant difference, not small differences. And on top of that, the interpretation, and on top of that, that we, no Christian on earth, is able to recite the Bible the way that Jesus recited it. No Christian on earth. That means, what is the word of God? We got Christian who knows the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. You see, when anything... In which language? When no, anything... Which, no, which version? When Let alone anything, language. Yeah. When anything is done and God is 100% involved, there is always an accuracy. Even if people translate it in a different way, with God there is always accuracy. And not only that, like people like John and the rest of them, some of them they have been with Jesus. 
and they possess no the proof. spirit of the living God. We have no proof. There is no proof. How can you, can you prove, prove to me that Abu Bakr, Omar, and Caleb were with Mo Muhammad? How do you know? Okay, How I will tell you. you know? I will Where tell you. By the way, John. Yeah. To, uh, to, no, to, tell me. I, I will tell you. I will yeah. tell you. I'm John. No, John. Something I will give you as a, as as a, you know someone who is younger than you, and I wanted to give you a bit of advice, accepted from a younger brother. Yeah. It is a weak argument, a weak argument. When you are debating about something, it's a weak argument to go and attack the opponent in something in them. I will, I will okay, tell you. Right, okay. So when you are discussing the Quran, and you say to me, this Quran, and I'm, while, while I'm answering the Quran, I will start attacking the Bible. That's weak. That's weakness. That shows I'm yeah. weak to respond. Yeah? Just for you to know. I will, will have, the discuss, have no problem to discuss all of these, if the companions they were there, what happened? I have no problem, but that's a, but that's not our discussion, you know. Our discussion is the point that yeah. you raised. Yeah, let's stick to this, and when it comes, honestly, and I will be discussing the Quran in details, and I will we, be discussing. Are, can I can I meet with you again? We discuss. No week? problem. Thank you. No brother. problem. But Thank now you. I will leave you with this, please, John. When you go home, you know God is there, and God mentioned about Himself in the Old Testament. God cannot be a man. God cannot be a flesh. So all of these things gives you, who is Jesus? And when Jesus said a clear statement, the only true God is the Father. What does that make him? So that's my advice to you, Brother John. My advice, he's living, he's living. That's my advice to you, and I will leave you with this. That's all. Thank you. So next week, I'm going to meet you at the same spot here. I'm here, and we carry on, yeah? No problem. Thank you so much, my brother. And thank you thank so you much. For the coffee. No worries. That's, no that's hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, my brother, Muslim brothers. Uh, all right. Thank Look you. after yourself, John. You. you are a very respectful person. You. Look after yourself. Thank you, my brother. All right. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you. Look after me. Allah guide you.